it's it's hot and it's it's been a long day. I can see y'all are tired, so I'll, I'll make this quick. But at first, uh, Brittany, um, I just want to say as a testament to Facebook, a lot of people knock Facebook, but uh, you know you've brought together this event and we've never met before, and this is I think one great example of how to, to use the internet for good. Some people like to use it for there you go, but uh, congratulations, fantastic event. Thank you. Thank you. Yay! 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 Wonderful job, wonderful. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, so my name is Ryan Yakovachi and uh, I'm uh, the manager of the Birdhouse Buying Club and we're right now just a, a small buying club that works with a couple dozen farms in the Tri-County area. Um, but that being said, uh, I want to talk to you today about radical community engagement and uh, understanding this permaculture event, trying to think of ways to tie this all together. Um, you know, it's, it's so what, what I do really quick, um, I, I grew up mostly in St. Pete and uh, I went to school at USF and working in, in, in Tampa and living up by USF, I, I quickly realized the kind of this alienation that exists in Tampa and I started working with a nonprofit in Sulphur Springs, which is a low income community. We're talking $14,000 median income, mostly for uh, foreclosed properties. Started working at an art nonprofit and totally uh, changed my perspective about what's happening in our country and, and where there's going to be a new growth, where there's got to be reconciliation. So I started working there. Uh, I moved into the neighborhood uh, three years ago, started to get into gardening and realizing this whole permaculture movement. And what's uh, really exciting about all of this is that you know this food movement that's beginning to just blow up in Tampa. And it's so exciting to be a part of this. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for being a part of it and pushing it in there because I see so many faces that have been a part of this movement for much longer than I have. The John Starnes and Emmanuel and, and some of the others, you and Eric, you know, you guys are, are really, I mean, some of these people that have been a part of this is really inspiring to see everyone come together. And, and so, you know, but, but, but moving into the neighborhood, I, I, you know, talking to all these people and seeing, I realize that there's an apartheid that's emerging in our country. And, and I echo Van Jones, uh, his sentiment, and realizing that there are those that have access to not just the food, but then the knowledge and, and the how-to, and there are those that don't. Um, and the reasons that I do the things that I do, and, 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 and number one, um, that this for me, I've noticed that it brings families together. When food, from growing it, to distributing it, to eating it, families are coming together. And I'm here to tell you, I've seen it happen from the farmers that I work with, and how close-knit those families are and those networks are, to then in the cities where people in my neighborhood They've been sharing food with each other for years, and it's commonplace. And I come in thinking, oh yeah, permaculture and gardening. They're like, well, actually, we're already doing a lot of this. We're already growing our food because it's saving us money, you know? And, and so, you know, in that, realizing my own privilege and ignorance of, of this whole situation, and, and, but, but I'm, I'm seeing that it's pulling families together and it's pulling communities together. And this is where things really begin to change when you reawaken what's happening local. And it's happening, and we're doing it. So that's super exciting to, to see. That's one of the reasons I, I do uh, getting into this distribution network. The second reason is because Dr. King, in, in reading, studying religion at USF, I took something with me that uh, Dr. King said, that it's not just about desegregation, but it's about integration. And this is a, per this is a permaculture principle. Yes. Always trying to integrate you know, ecosystems, right, and bring things together. Well, you know, desegregation happened. But the question is, did integration happen? Did people's hearts change? And in, in noticing the cultural differences between subcultures from the wealthiest to the poorest to Hispanic to black communities to, you know, your Carol Woods, wh whatever. The funny thing is we all live next door to each other. We don't even realize it. But what we're lacking and what I've seen, we don't have enough opportunities to interact with each other, to understand and listen to each other's cultures. That being said, you know, the hope of, of urban gardening and, and this whole food movement is that there are now new spaces for us to interact economically with each other, you know, which food, I mean, it's a value. It's, it's a, there's an economic to this, you know? And, and so that opportunity is huge and it has so much untapped potential. It's happening in Detroit, it's happening in Oakland, it's happening in Brooklyn, all over. And, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here, I guess, in part to remind us in Tampa to not forget about those communities that, that whether they're poor or rich, that have not heard about this and that, that don't know it exists and the opportunities are out there uh, for this to grow. So, um, so yeah, I think, I think that uh, uh, why I do, in the hope of a, a food cooperative, which is what I've been working on for the past uh, couple years now, 
in bringing this together in a low-income neighborhood to make this food affordable for everybody. While we're still using money, while money's still a value, I mean, the U.S. dollar still got some value to it, I think. But you know, you, using these systems that we currently exist within to, you know, alter and to set the groundwork for then what's to come. Because who's to say what's going to pop first? We don't know. But to be nimble and to be able to move as quickly as we can to spread you know, these perma blitzes, to, to open up distribution networks, to move fast, to then uh, adapt to whatever systems you know, are to come. And so really focusing on integrating and, and putting ourselves out there and, and taking chances and, and being in uncomfortable situations that we don't do that enough. And, and when you know you're uncomfortable, it's a good situation. Push forward. Even if you make a mistake, you step on someone's toes, people are going to tell you, but you won't know until you try, until you actually put yourself out there. And what I've come to understand in working in this neighborhood, you can connect with the most southern, racist, neo-fascist, whatever. You can connect with you know, the most hood, teenage, saggy pants, whatever. If you have good manners, that people, will, people will respect that. If you respect each other and you come from that, even if they don't respect you at that time, but if you have good manners, I've noticed you can talk to anybody. And, I, and I, so I feel that that is super important in, in getting this, as this you know, budding food movement happens in Tampa, you know, really putting ourselves out there, challenging us, have manners, educate people about this stuff, and, and it'll further bring our communities and our families together. And the third thing, the reason I do this, is um, I hate to, to tell everybody this, and I hate to be the one to say it, but if you don't already know, we are not free. We're not. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. Are you um, serious? We're not? <laughs> we ain't free, girl. Oh my god, you just blew my mind. So, you know, I, and a lot of people think they are, you know? And this is the contradiction of our society right now. We claim to be the freest in the world, right? But what, what can we do for ourselves right now? I, I grew up not knowing how to, how, to, how to sow something, how to plant things. You know, my mother knew this stuff, but it was lost in my generation and maybe generations before. And, and so there is a huge gap that this idea of freedom, and, and what to me freedom means is being free of contradiction. You know, to be, to have integrity. And, you know, we claim to be free, but the contradiction is that we can't grow our own food. We can't, you know, uh, manufacture our own goods. We can't do, we, we're trying now to just become independent of these systems when 30 years ago they were talking about this, but capitalism just put a squash to that and the powers that be, you know, took those opportunities away from us. And so this opportunity that's coming is, is really, in, in the narrative that we need to begin to tie into this movement, it's about our freedom. It's resolving that contradiction that we are not free, but we claim to be. So when we talk to people, and I think this is what is so sexy about Occupy, is that that's the narrative that they've created. You know, whether or not you agree with them or not, there is a sentiment that we can all feel and say, damn, they're right. You know, there's, there's something to that. And some people have been saying this for years. But we now need to integrate this into the food systems. We need to integrate this into what we're doing. When we go out and we talk to those super wealthy people that we serve at the restaurants, or we go into the neighborhoods when we're doing our community service, it doesn't matter. Talking about this as freedom is huge. And that's really what's going to begin to push this into the mainstream. It's what's going to allow us to talk to everybody, to relate to everybody, and interconnect this movement, to integrate the movement. Um, so that being said, um, I'm working to start a food cooperative in Tampa. This summer, I'm hoping to work with LocallyGrown.net, throw it up on uh, the internet. If you've got products to sell, let's do it. We've got an auditing system that I'm developing to make sure that everyone knows that what is where it's coming from and what it is and how you do it, and you guys get to decide what you want to buy. And uh, yeah, I'll be running produce around Tampa for as long as uh, there's produce to grow. So um, I've got some cards. I'll, I'll put them out. If you guys have any questions later on, I've got to go uh, open up a bar. Uh, the good old taverns where all these revolutions maybe happen. Uh, yeah, <laughs> quick, quick question. Can you tell us how you set up that thing where the neighborhood kids get to sell oh, the citrus fruit? You know, I, I, that's a great story of uh, this kind of integration that, that I'm talking about. Um, so these old white ladies, real bitter, they've been living in the neighborhood 40, 50 years, and uh, they've seen the neighborhood change and the culture change, and they're afraid, and they live inside their house. They have a gun, you know, the father died a couple years ago. And so they had uh, great citrus trees on the property, pink grapefruit, white grapefruit, uh, loquats. And um, we were just kind of sharing with them. And yeah, hey, well, you know, we tried to do some gardening stuff. One of the ladies started to grow a lot of herbs. And, and uh, I noticed that this fruit on her property, and then I started to notice it all around the neighborhood. And uh, some of the kids that I would worked with in the art program, you know, they, they had no opportunity. They're, maybe they're going to high school. Maybe they're, you know, working to deal drugs now, whatever. They're, they're trying to make money. They're trying to survive. 
And so uh, one of the kids who, um, him and I, he lived on the same street, and uh, uh, you know, I, one day it was kind of just kind of clicked in my head like, do you want to make some money? Okay, you, there, these ladies down the street, they got some fruit. I want to introduce you. Let's see if we can make this work. And, uh, and, and this goes back to the idea of manners. And now every time that kid goes over there to harvest fruit that then I sell either through the buying club or I call up my chefs or somebody that I know that wants to buy grapefruit or what have you. And uh, every time he goes over there, these women who are like, again, they're like, they're racist, they're like classist, they're, they're just like crazy and old. And I, I love them to death, but uh, you know, they, and when this kid comes over, they are just incredibly positive about him. And they're like, Jamarcus is so polite and he's, he's so nice and he lets us know when he's coming over. And, and it's those kinds of moments, creating opportunities like that for people to interact, to redefine those preconceived notions, to say, oh, you know what? This isn't true about everybody. This isn't a blanket statement about all these punk little kids, you know, with their saggy pants. Like, you know, getting, seeing that happen is, is really powerful. And this is the kind of economics that I'm talking about, where then these teens in the neighborhood, and, and Megan here is, uh, is helping uh, myself and another gentleman out, we're uh, co-founders, and Megan's a, a student at HCC, and Harvest in the Hood is the name we call the program. And we now are trying to organize teens throughout the neighborhood to harvest from mulberries to citrus to whatever we can. And, and distribute it throughout the neighborhoods and hopefully it'll be all over the city of Tampa and these kids will be running around and distributing and, and harvesting mm -hmm. but you know it's, it's little programs like these starting small really focused and what permaculture tells yeah. us to start as, as, as small as you can and then build it from there and uh, it's possible it's happening all of us are doing it and we each have something to share the wisdom exists in all of us even those that don't even know about it that haven't heard about it the wisdom exists all throughout there and, and you only know that it exists by dialoguing with those people, by talking with them, by talking with that team, you know, and finding out that, oh, they just want to make money. Okay, let's figure out how you can make some money. And, and you know, and then connecting those dots and working from there. But, um, but yeah, so uh, the harvest in the hood, it's coming along. We're building it out. And, and, and if you got any fruit trees, too, let me know. If you got wasteful fruit, we'll uh, get it on the market and, and sell it. And you guys can eat some of the cool teams that we work with. Um, but uh, I actually, and I've got to, I've got to run. I'm going to be late for work, but I appreciate you all uh, listening. And uh, if you have any questions, again, I'll have a little cards. Birdhouse Buying Club is the name. It's on. Uh, it's got a website and an email and, and what have you. So you have cards in there. You say, yeah, right? I'm, I'm going to drop some off here. So. Woo! Freedom! <laughs>